strategy and how you might want to use my triple header strategy or my three easy pieces and incorporate it into your existing trading plan. Now, there are probably as many trading strategies as there are traders in the world. But not all trading strategy and trading plans are created equal. I suggest that you find some strategies and then build a trading plan around them. There's a plethora of trading strategies available to you, but I also encourage you to create your own because when you build and test your own strategy, you are the master of your plan and you understand all the ins and outs. Now, first of all, when you create your own strategy, it requires you to build and develop a greater knowledge of the markets and its price movement. You're not just fi blindly following along some mathematical plan. Secondly, when one develops their own trading strategy, they're tuned into how the strategy actually works. What will cause it not to work and what will cause it to work better. Now, creating your own strategy is a bit time consuming, but it can also be fun. I love doing it. You know, what I, what I do is I look for opportunities in my charts, not possible opportunities. I look for when the stock or an asset or the chart has shown a huge profit potential that I hadn't traded. And I look back at the chart and say, okay, what could have helped me predict this? What strategy could I have applied to have actually seen this actually happen? And when I see the things that would have, or the tools that could have helped me predict that move, I then try to see, okay, well, if I combine this, combine that, and combine this, will that work for me in other, in other cases? So how I generate ideas is just by watching charts, both past and real time. No matter what time frame I am viewing on the chart, I look for moves where there was money to be made. Not where I could have made, not where I can make money, not taking a risky, untested trade. Where was there money to be made that I didn't see or that I didn't trade? So in short, you want to analyze your charts looking for opportunities. Examine those opportunities Extract how you turn those opportunities into real money without exposing yourself to excessive risk. Now, this is where you have to kind of not use your imagination, but you have to follow kind of along. I look at strategies as filters. Whatever steps I'm going to use to find a trade, determine if it's a good trade, decide to make a trade, they're all filters. What I want to do is I want to say my buddy calls me and says, you know, Apple's going to be releasing good results today. You should trade Apple. Okay. My buddy gave me a sell tip. You know, or I was predicting the Federal Reserve to not make the quarter point interest rate decrease. So I expected the assets to go up. Whatever reason comes along that gives me a buy or sell alert. That's it. Alert. I got a buy or sell alert. That's it. Well, now I'm going to drop it through my filtration system, which is my strategy to see if it holds true. I would really like my strategy to tell me, oh, guess what? I filtered this out and it's not a good trade because I'm only looking for high probability successful trades, high profitability successful trades, because I want my strategies to start filtering out all the junk trades, all the would be, could be's, all the small profit trade strategies. Okay, now, because I still then have to, okay, now it tells me, okay, I'm gonna trade Facebook or I'm gonna trade Apple, I'm gonna buy it, okay, my filter's given me a potential entry point. It's given me a, a target point. It's given me a potential stop loss point. 
Well, that's all fine. But now I have put all that into my risk management tools and my personal risk management kit to decide if I can afford to make that trade. Because all of us can always find a trade. That, yeah, we can if we can put the stop loss down here at 120 pips down and we can maybe take profit at you know, 50 pips profit. Okay, we can make a trade, but we can't afford to do that. We're looking for three to one in our risk management, and we can only afford a hundred a hundred dollars per trade risk or a thousand dollars trade risk. Well, I can't make, make that trade. So there's many other pieces of a trading decision. So the first thing we want to do is see once we've kind of put this strategy together, we want to see how many signals and how often or we want to check it against 20 or more signals that we got 20 or more buys signals that we got 20 more sells and and see if this filtration system or this strategy works okay and if would it would it have netted us a profit okay then we want to check the strategy against upcoming movements but we're only testing if it does then maybe we want to start trading it in real time on a demo data account. If you produce a profit in a demo account, only using that strategy each month for at least two months, then maybe we, we would at that point consider that strategy with real money. So again, think of these as filtering your inputs because not all trading advice is good. Figure out where the advice has come from and how much you can trust the source. You know, lots of platforms in even LVX have pushes signals out to you all the time. They're giving you buy and sell signals. You know, you go on investing.com, you go on Forex Factory, they're all giving you buy and sell signals. Okay. Well, if they were all right all the time, we'd all be getting rich. Now, this is a particularly important when you're using the internet. There are a lot of amateurs out there who think they know what they're doing, but they don't. There's lots of these buy and sell signals being generated by some platform that built in some algorithm that says when RSI goes over 50 and breaks 70 and MACD does a crossover, generate a buy or sell signal. And this is what they're pushing out there. They're just mathematical calculations that they're pushing out to. Okay, well, you got that buy or sell signal. But then when you develop your trading strategy, you'll start with a set of recommendations from an analyst or other traders and try these out on your demo account and modify them to see what happens. Now, it's important to create your own formula for success as will improve your trading skills. But don't reinvent the wheel. You can learn from trading analysts and experienced traders they are still a great still in the market because they're successful study their strategies and learn from them don't follow them blindly but test out what they're saying and see if it works like tonight we're going to look at my triple header strategy there's no way in a one hour class or a 15 minute class or a 30 minute part of the class that i'm going to actually ever be able to explain it and every bit of the ins and outs and all the details to you. I've been working it for years and it, you know, I know how it works. Me trying to explain it to you in a short class isn't, but you can take away tonight what I give you and then test it, modify it, make it yours. Now, you might want to include fundamental analysis. Okay. Not part of your strategy but i always take a look at the economic calendar see what economic events are affecting the market excuse me before i or when i use my strategy now remember not one strategy works for everyone it'll give you everything you want you have to decide what you want to accomplish do you want trading signals? Do you want it to give you entry points, exit points, stop loss points? Now, online trading is considered by some 
to be one of the most challenging styles of trading, which is why it's important to jumpstart your journey with proven trading strategies. So when you're building a strategy, you want to think different, differently. Trading is simple, but it's not easy. That's where the effective trading strategy is vital. Now, you'll see strategies out there that are so complex and so involved. You'll take a look at people's charts. They'll, you know, you'll get lost in all the lines going through. I'm telling you, I look at some people that I, I don't don't even know how they can make a trading decision. They have so many lines, so many indicators, so many oscillators on their charts that phew, I, I, I don't know how they ever make a decision. Now, the fact is, the only thing that you can decide is an asset going to go up or down. At what point do you want to enter that trade? Where the, it might go to, where you'd have to put your stop loss based on the swing of the market and where you'd want to exit and take your profit. That's the extent of it you can do in a strategy. Like I said, from there comes your risk management tools. And then after that, you might decide how you'd want to trade it. Maybe you want to use a market order. Maybe you want to use a limit order. Maybe you want to put an OCO. Maybe there's a specific price you're willing to enter the market. And whatever Bitcoin hits 8,992, you're willing to sell it. Okay, that's so you put up a good to cancel. All of this is after your trading strategy. So I always believe in the keep it simple rule. I don't want to make a chart that has 97 things on it going on because I'll never be able to make a decision. So in today's connected site, we are bombarded with information. Some of this information is important, but most of it's just noise. So a sound trading practice is not to take information at face value. Rather, think differently and validate the statements about the product to see if there is a bona fide trading opportunity. The best way to rein in your emotion is to have a trading plan and Read it daily, keep track of it. But that's a trading plan, not a strategy. And your strategies should be part of your trading plan. Now, as day traders, and that's what we basically are, okay, we're not technically day traders because a rule of thumb is you're all here because you're CFD and Forex traders. A day trader, the biggest rule of thumb of the day trader is they want to make a lot of small trades with a lot of little bits of profit and make a lot of trades, but they're also cannot keep a trade open overnight. Okay. As a CFD trader, and a Forex trader, we have the advantage of keeping our trades open really indefinitely. But most CFD trades are closed within 72 hours and 90% of them are closed in the same day. But if something hasn't occurred by the end day, you can keep it open till tomorrow. You can keep it going as long as you like. So it's important for us as traders to refresh these criteria in our mind before trading. So you should have an overall trading strategy or a trading plan that incorporates your strategy. But that's for a different class because we have a whole class of building your trading plan because you should have your trading plans what has your risk management in it. And your trading plan is what has all the other pieces of information because the strategy is just one little window or one little portion of that. So if you think about it, when we were in elementary school, we learned our ABCs and our one, two, threes. And as our education evolved, we use these to build sentences. And then we could solve simple math problems. We could add one and one together and get two, and we could add three and two together and get five. We could write cat and hat and back. Now, the further our education expanded, the more proficient we became. So because of our continuing education, we developed the ability to write pages of sentences or to solve quadratic equations. So you have to remember, same thing is true in your trading. Start out with 
simple A, Bs, and Cs, and then build them into simple words. Maybe then you'd want to make them into add more things onto them. A lot of you guys want to start out right away using all these types of indicators and oscillators. Well, the fact is indicators just indicate and they should be a secondary set of information or filters, not a primary. So what should your primaries be? Or your one, two, threes, or your ABCs? So today, traders have all the modern computer methods of interpreting price and buying trends. But no matter how sophisticated you get, all traders must get back to the basics and simple Forex trading to be successful in the long term. So where do we start? Well, my first rule of thumb in my triple header strategy is support and resistance. Now, whether you call it support and resistance, demand and supply, or peaks and troughs, I don't think it really matters. The important part is that you get a better with identifying these levels where price changes direction and reverses. Where the bulls come in, where the bears come in. These areas are can be significant to a trader to be able to start to recognize where there are high probability areas for entering a trade at lower risk. Now, we have full classes on support and resistance. But if you don't know exactly what it is, support and resistance can be thought of as, if you think of price moving up and down an elevator, and you think of yourself getting on the car of an elevator, the support is below your feet, so therefore it's the floor. The ceiling is the resistance is above your head. In order to move up, you have to break through that ceiling to move to the next floor. But what happens is that ceiling becomes the floor below your feet and supports you uh, you reach the next ceiling. When the elevator is coming down, you have just the opposite. Now, when we can find these levels in a price chart of where prices stop going up and down. Okay, so we have we know that we have the floor below our feet, the ceiling above our head, and elevators moving up. But we don't know what that what floor that elevator is going to stop at. So by looking at historical prices and see where that elevator has stopped when his price has been moving up or down, we can start marking these levels. And when we mark these levels, we can carry them forward into the future. Now, the only levels that are important are around where price is currently trading. But once you've got all of these on a chart, like you see on my sample chart up here, these levels here are really unimportant to us but these can be pushed out way into the future. Because the next time price is up around here, these are the levels that will be important. So these are all the floors that that elevator is moving up and down on. So today, we're in between these floors. Now, if we had evaluated this elevator moving up and down in this office building, and we could see that elevator stops a lot of times on two, a lot of times on four, and it goes up to the roof deck because that's where there's a coffee machine, a cigarette machine, and smoking areas. So you know that those are the popular force. So one and three doesn't have, don't have much activity. So statistically, when that the elevator is moving up, you have a better chance of stopping at two than at four than you do with three. Okay. So as price is moving between these levels, you can then make evaluations of how prices move. Okay. 
Now, again, there are many ways to get these levels. We can get them from Fibonacci retracement tools. Uh, we can get them from pivot point charts. Or we can get them from what I call eyeballing. And eyeballing is you physically looking at a chart, historic chart, and going way back in price to find these swing highs and swing lows where price stopped and started in the past. Now, I personally believe my favorite are eyeballs. So you can see on, let's take you to this chart. Okay. I've eyeballed these levels by going back historically to see where price in the past has hemmed and hot, where it's stopped being pushed up and slowed down being pushed down, and where it's got congested in the past. And then we take those lines and bring them to the future. And look how it held through here. Look at how important this support level was here. Okay. Look how important that level was here. Now, when price was moving up and above it, okay, there's no guarantee it's not going to break through and fall below it. Okay. There's no guarantee one way or another. But the odds are much higher that even if it's going to break through it, that it will get some little bit of congestion around those support and resistance levels. Now, when price does break through it, a support line, when price is moving back up the next time, it becomes a resistance line that price has a problem breaking through. Again, it can push right through there. But look at this, all of this trading that was validated by that price level. Okay. Now, these levels were brought through from the past and projected forward. Okay. So if we see price moving back up, we would expect it to move up to this support line or this resistance line at this point, and either we might break through, but we would expect it to bounce off of it a couple of times. If it were to break through there, we'd expect it to go here. Okay. That's one way of adding support and resistance on their chart. Another way is with Fibonacci retracement tool. Okay. Another way, like I said, is with pivot points. Pivot points are mathematical calculations based on the high and the low, and then they can be drawn onto your charts. Okay. Another way of getting support and resistance levels is with what we call chart patterns of which I use in my triple strategy, which are, well, these are all the different chart patterns. And these patterns give us levels of support and resistance, okay? Because in a triangle pattern, which is what I use mostly, or a pennant or a wedge, which I classify all as triangles, this top line is your resistance line, and the bottom line is your support line. Support, resistance, support, resistance, resistance, support. And they just reverse whether it's moving up or down. But if we were to use these as levels of support and resistance on our chart, I keep losing. Okay. So on this current chart of this is on uh, Ripple, this is not a trade recommended. This is just where there was a perfect triangle being formed. And I was able to draw a triangle on my chart. The triangle legs of the triangle are based on support and resistance. So this would be the support line. This is the resistance line for this triangle. Now, I also drew on my charts my historical support and resistance lines around this price. And so what happens is as price is moving into the apex of the triangle, I'm looking for a breakout where I don't know whether it's going to break up or down, but I'm looking for a breakout. Now, as it 
price moves into this congestion and it gets closer to my resistance line up here, I would expect something to happen. It will break out and break above my resistance line. Or in this case, it finally broke down and I look for it to fall to my support lines. I'm now, I have a triangle. I have price moving into the apex in a triangle, which this is telling me that price will break out and want it either up or down as the price gets forced into the center of the triangle. And I'm looking for a breakout. I've got my support and resistance lines on here. And then my rule in my strategy is I wait for the third candle after the breakout to confirm the direction of the breakout and the momentum. So here we had a breakout, which some people would have just started trading at this point and traded the price to go up, but it was a totally false breakup. Number one, we didn't see an increase in volume. Number two, it got stuck at the resistance line and wasn't able to break through there. And three, we did not get three successful candles. I would only, I only in my strategy, we only trade the breakout after the, the development of the third candle supporting the, the, the direction of the breakout. So if we would have said this is a false breakout. Now, first of all, when we get a breakout, the momentum should carry the asset in the same price differential as you got in the width of the triangle. So here we have where our momentum should have taken us, our take profit point. We would have had that same piece of information up here. Now, we didn't have to jump in this trade here because that gives us a risky trade. We had more than enough to get in a trade later waiting for a more secure trade. We would have not we would have never entered this trade if we waited because it never did and never reached that third candle. Here we have the breakout down, which was not a false breakout. Okay. We sit here tight, we get our second candle, we get our third candle, and this is the point, and look at this. It also broke below the close, was below our resistance level. So therefore, we would have entered at this point, this trade to go down, predicting our maximum movement to here. We would have put our stop loss at the swing high here. Okay. This one could have been a choice for your swing high or this one. I always take the highest point of a false breakout as my swing high. This is just where I'm putting my stop loss. My take profit would have been here, an equal distance to the width of the triangle. And my entry point would have been at the close of the third candle. So I would have entered here, but my stop loss here predicted my take profit. Now, at this point, we are still in profit, but we still have a farther run for this can because we're only down to here. So we have still made the difference between 0.31654 and 0.3042, but we're still in this trade. We, there's no reason, you know, price has not come back up to our stop loss and it hasn't come. It did bounce above our entry point here, but it didn't go back in here and it came right back down the next hand. So we're still sitting with this open trade, okay. going in our direction, moving slowly, but still in profit for us. So you could have sat tight and been very, very happy with this trade. So it's a combination of the triple header strategy of chart pattern, 
support and resistance levels. And the third candle entry point. Okay. The fourth confirmation, which is a look at volume. And we could see at this breakout point, we could see the volume jump up. Okay. Volume had petered off in this area. And right here, jumped up to confirm our decision. So you have three simple pieces of a trading strategy. So let's go back over to my PowerPoint and let's talk about this a little bit more. So we've taken our support and resistance levels, drawn them on our charts, And then we would have started our candlestick analysis. Now, this is not knowing, I didn't say to you anything about bullish and bearish candles. I didn't say to you anything about a single candlestick pattern. I simply said the third candle in the direction of the trade. So most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis, but most of what we learn is completely useless. Well, the standard approach to candlestick analysis is basic pattern recognition, which really fails to work in the real trading world or for CFD trading. You know, seeing a Harami, seeing a bearish engulfing, a bullish engulfing, seeing double tweezers, seeing you know, hammers, hanging men, you know, dojis, they really do work. Don't work for the type of trading we're doing. So you can skip straight to the advanced candlestick analysis without knowing some of the basics. If you don't know the basics, that's fine. I got you covered. So when Forex traders first start out, they usually learn about candlesticks. But what they learn is useless. They normally see a list of candlestick patterns. And look, if you come to my basic candlestick course, that's what I teach you. I teach you 32 candles patterns, 16 of the most prob pro you know, the most well-known ones, how to spot them, what they're trying to tell you. But it's very hard. Very few people successfully use them in their trading. Because okay. they normally see a list of candle patterns, like the ones we're going to flip over to. And each pattern has a set in stone set of definitions that when you see it, this is what it's telling you you're supposed to do. But this isn't really candlestick analysis. It's really just pattern recognition. And for a price action trader like I am, and that most of us for CFD are, it's useless. Actually, it's worse than useless. Thinking about candles just as patterns is counterproductive. It makes you a worse trader. It leads you to make massive mistakes. Why? Given a pattern, a set definition leads to tunnel vision. When you see that a specific pattern, you assume that something will happen. But that's not really how candlesticks work. All candlesticks need to be assessed based on the candlesticks around them and the other factors. So the truth about candlesticks, normally people say a spinning top means reversal is imminent, which can be true. However, the same pattern can also mean that a continuation pattern is imminent and it can mean the same thing, the price is temporarily stalling. It can mean a lot of different things. So thinking of candlesticks as simple patterns is a wrong way to do things. You need to look beyond those patterns. You need to look at the story of price. Every single candle on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you get this true story of price. So the foundation of my strategy is reading and understanding the story of price. Well, where do we see the story of price? We saw it in support and resistance in the elevators. We saw it in the triangles. Okay, we saw the price moving to apex. When it's moving at apex, what's happening is traders are at a point of indecision. Okay. Those candlesticks are fitting within that pattern of indecision, even though you might have longer candles and you might have green candles, you might have red candles, 
they're all getting smaller and smaller because you can't form a triangle without smaller candles. They move in that at apex. So at that point, it's telling us something about price and that nobody's in control. The buyers aren't in control and the sellers are in control. But when price breaks out, if it breaks upward, that means the buyers are starting to take control. If it breaks downward, the sellers are starting to take control. So if you look at the three highlighted candles here, it's easy to conclude that the sellers are in control of the price. The candles all close lower than they open. They are created, cre they created new lows beyond the previous candles. Now, for what we're looking at, we don't need to have three red candles. We just have to have three candles, the third candle remaining in the direction of the breakout from the triangle. So what we might look for is indecision candles occur when neither the buyers or sellers can gain and maintain control of price. They are common, but they are used in the right way. They can be very powerful. So what we're looking for is this indecision candles as we get closer to the apex of the triangle. So let, let me pop up the chart again here. So what we see right here are major indecision candles. Okay. See how tight the bodies are getting as we get closer and closer in here? But this here is an indecision candle. This here is an indecision candle. But then we get decision-making candles. But we have our third candle that is below and in the direction of the breakout. Okay. So we have indecision candles that tells you something is about to happen. And then we get our three candles. So we're not learning about bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. We're not learning about Haramis and Dojis. We're just looking to read price action. So if we combine that price action along with support and resistance, we can still start making some in decisions. So when price hits resistance, we get an indecision candle forming a green highlight. So remember we had the third candle breakout, small body, green body, and right there on the, on the, support, the resistance line. So when we combine support and resistance with candles and a triangle formation, a chart pattern, and I, I put pennants, wedges, triangles, whether the ascending, descending, symmetrical, rising wedges, falling wedges, because all they are are different definitions of those lines of support and resistance converging on each other. I call them all triangles. I don't trade head and shoulders patterns. I don't trade tea cups and sauce. I don't trade double tops and double bottoms, triple tops and triple bottoms. I'm looking for a converging support line and a resistance line. Okay, I don't care whether it's an ascending or descending triangle or it's a metrical triangle. So price, Action allows you to take many different types of trades, reversals, continuations, ranging, swinging, breakout, scalp trades, just to name a few. So we want to look at the direction. The, we want to look for a chart pattern. We want to look at support and resistance. And then we want to wait to our third candle breakout. And we have got ourselves a simple trading strategy. So you know, we should always be aware of the trends, support and resistance, and the candles.
and it holds the truth whether it's going up or going down, whether you're looking at a buy or a sell position. Okay. And then you can set your entry point, your stake, your stop loss points, and make all of your trading decisions. Because targets are easy are very also easy. You need to know, make sure your target comes before major barriers like the next area of support and resistance. So if you enter a long reversal from support, make sure your target is before the next resistance level. But then you have to apply it because once you have all this set up, you then have to drop it into your risk reward ratios to determine whether you can afford to make that trade. So it's very easy to set up your target point, your entry point, your stop loss point. Okay. Combine it with the swing highs and swing lows of your candles along with your support and resistance levels. So I always start out by looking at my overall trend, then my support and resistance levels, then I look at price action, and finally I look at volume to confirm. And this can be your entire trading strategy. So this should give you a basic starting point, not something convoluted, not something using an involved technical indicator. Start out with something you can understand, something you can make a smart trading decision from, and then you can add on indicators to this as the next level of filters to filter your input. But this is a good starting point. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Have a great trading week. And if you want to learn more about starting out trading strategies, go to www.alvexo.com and sign up for their education platform. And you'll be able to learn a lot more as you go. Once again, have a great night now. And thank you for supporting investing.com and Alvexo.